Welcome back to the lowdown on physics. This is screencast number three in the VCE physics elective structures and materials. Today we will be looking at strain. Let's just start with a qu uh, quick recap of the last screencast that we did. Stress is the force per cross-sectional area of the material. Strength is the maximum stress before failure. Safety factors um, are a way of accounting for any weaknesses in the material. So for safety factor five, we use one fifth the maximum strength. And composite materials are materials consisting of two or more uh, materials that retain the properties of the individual materials. So we'll start by defining strain. Strain is the amount of distortion, so how much it gets stretched or compressed uh, per unit length of the given material when it is subjected to stress. So stress causes strain. Mathematically, we would say the change in length divided by the length is equal to our strain. So delta means change. So Delta L is change in length, and L is the original length. Now, note that there are no units for strain. Um, that's because we're doing meters divided by meters, or centimeters divided by centimeters. So in effect, it doesn't matter what unit you use, as long as it is always consistent. Whatever you use on top must be the same as what's on the bottom. And that's where they'll trip you up in your exam because you may get an extension in centimetres and a length in metres. So unit consistency, really important. So I said it just a moment ago, but just to clarify, the amount of strain depends on the amount of stress applied. If the stress is not too great, then we get a proportional amount of strain dependent on that stress. So. Remember that stress relates to the, the stretching or the compressing forces. Strain relates to the change in the length caused by the stress. So stress is causing the strain. Okay, let's just quickly walk you through a basic example. So we've got a rubber mat that's normally 3.5 centimeters thick, and when it's used, reduces to 2 centimeters thick. So find the change in thickness. Well, delta L is the difference between the used and the original, 1.5 centimeters. Find the compressive strain. OK, so delta L over L. We've got 1.5 over 3.5, which is about 0.43, give or take. No units, remember. So we could say maybe about 42.9% um, strain that's acting. So it's often represented as a percentage. OK, another example. This is a more common type example that you'd expect in your exam. One that has multiple parts to it and it relates the stress and the strain together. So we've got a 1.3 metre piano wire. We've got 1.5 millimetres in diameter, so two things need to convert that to radius when it comes to stress, need to convert that to metres. We're given a force, we're given a strain of 4.3%. Okay, so determine the extension of the wire, so we use that information in the original length, and then we'll come back to do stress. So we've got delta L over L, We've got 0.043, so you need to convert this back from a percentage to a value. And then we've got delta L over 1.3, the original length. So rearranging, we get a, a change in length of 0.0559, um, or putting that into something that's a little bit easier to understand, 5.56 centimetres. OK, now to calculate the stress, uh, yeah, stress, sigma equals F over A. So we know F, we can work out what A is. So we've got 900 divided by pi times, so we've got to halve that, divide by 1,000, 
to put it into meters and square that. And that gives us 5.09 times 10 to the 8 pascals or 509 megapascals. Okay, and just a follow up question. Given that steel has a strength rating of 5 times 10 to the 8 newtons per meter squared or 500 megapascals, do we think that that wire would fail? Well, given that if it was tightened with the force that it said that it would be, then that would give it a stress greater than the strength. Strength is the maximum stress before failure. So yes, we would expect that that piano string should fail. And that's it. Short screencast. See you in class.